Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So this is part two of my series Making a Boho Journal. And in this one, I'm going to make a, a journal cover made mainly from paper. So to start with, I am taking this food box and all I'm going to do is open it up and then I'm going to cut the edges off. I'll then give it a light sanding. So I'm going to go right round that and take all those excess edges off. So if you've been waiting for this video, apologies, it's taken a little bit longer than I intended. That's been for a number of reasons. First, just being a lack of time. Secondly, being that I couldn't actually decide what way I was going to make the cover. I had a couple of ideas and I'm actually ending up making two. So there will be a second video on a cover which is more about using fabrics. And thirdly, I had a bit of an issue with the term boho, but I'll explain more about that later. So 10, ten centimetres wide or just under four inches, this one, and it's about 12 and a half, 13 centimetres long, which is around about five inches. And I'll just quickly show you the, the spine size. And I'm just showing you this for information because this can be done with any size of box. So five centimetres, just under two inches. So if you're thinking of making one in this style, this is quite a small box, but you could make it much bigger if you wanted to. And then I'm just going to give it a light sand. Now there will be parts of this video where I will put it on to double speed because I'm just doing a kind of repetitive process. So for my cover I'm going to use some of the papers that I bought from Peter's Handmade Paper and I'll leave the link below. I, I mentioned these in part one. But you know, you could use any papers that you have. It doesn't have to be this type of paper. You could use collage papers. And indeed, in part four, I will go on to show you when I'm making background papers, exactly how some of those could also be used to cover your journal. So at the moment, I'm just going through those papers and what I'm thinking about is cutting them into smaller squares to make more of a patchwork. So just taking two or three sheets of paper there and cutting some pieces off and just using my rotary tool to cut them. Now you'll see when I move on a bit that I actually introduce another paper because I wanted something with a bit of contrast. So I'm trying to cut these into kind of different sizes. They're all basically rectangles or kind of squares, but I just want to have these as a bit of interest on the cover. So I just quickly want to say about my issue with the term boho, and that is that at certain points in our history, the term boho has been used in a very pejorative way, or, or perhaps more the full word bohemian. Uh, it's meant different things to different people at different points in history. And as I say, it was sometimes used in a very pejorative way, as are some of the words that are kind of connected to what's deemed to be boho. So for a good while there, I thought about changing the name of this journal entirely. However, whilst I don't think that term is used these days, I think most of us will take the term in its, its current meaning. You know, something that's a bit wild, a bit free, free spirit, a wanderer, someone who likes to travel. So I'm using it in that sense. So if you have an issue with the term boho, then I hope you'll understand where I'm coming from in terms of I'm certainly not using it in a pejorative way at all. And, you know, if anything, some of our great poets, some of our great artists were deemed to be bohemian in terms of their lifestyle. And, you know, I'm thinking as an artist, maybe my lifestyle is slightly bohemian, not as wild and wacky as some of those artists. But nevertheless, I think it's often a term that's used for creatives.
And in terms of some of the things that I want to include in this journal once it's finished, I think that term boho fits very well indeed. So I will say a bit more about that and about the direction of this journal as I go through the various parts in the series. So if you've listened to all of that from me, thank you for doing so. And I, as I say, I hope you understand why I am going to continue to use that term boho for this particular journal. So here I am, I've cut all these pieces down and I'm now just using some gel matte medium to stick them in place. The gel matte medium was simply the glue that I had to hand at that point. If you had a super sticky glue stick, I'm sure that could be used. You could use PVA glue, a matte medium, Mod Podge, Aileen's Tacky. You could basically use any of those sorts of glues. I've just decided to use the gel medium because that's what I had to hand at that particular point in time. It does tend to be a more expensive way to, to glue things down, but I always find it, it gives a good finish. Now the gluing process does take a little while, but I'm just leaving this in to show you anyway. You'll see that in some places it overlaps slightly, in other places I touch up against the other pieces. And all I'm basically trying to do is create a bit of interest with these different papers. And I said so in part one, these are absolutely fabulous papers. Some are thicker than others. And one of the reasons for using the gel matte medium was I wanted to try and get a good medium that wasn't going to soak right through the papers. And, and I think I managed to achieve that by, by using this. Now the funny thing about cutting small pieces is it always seems to take more paper than it would if you, you're just setting down one piece of paper. That just seems to be the way of it. So just trying to get those all into place and to create something that's pleasing to the eye, to my eye, but at the same time something that does have that feel of being a patchwork and just kind of bits and pieces put together. So I have made, or I'm still in the process of making, a second cover, which will be mainly fabric. I was going to show both in this part, but one, it was going to make it a very long video, and two, I it, it's it's taken me a bit longer than than I expected. So I decided to make this one the kind of paper with the cardboard cover, and the next one will be the fabric cover. So here I'm just looking at whether or not I want to include some fabrics and these are the fabrics that I got from Love Me Blue and again I will include the link below. And I'm liking this piece and thinking that that might make a nice band around the cover and it's still my intention to put that on although I haven't done so at this stage. I wondered about putting, you know, a piece on the front and again I've decided not to at this point. That's not to say that I won't go on to do that at the next stage. My main aim at this point is just to get a cover completed that I can then come back and add to. So at this point I am giving this a really good dry. So I'm very gently putting the folds back into place. I'm I do it gently because I don't want to kind of stretch the paper and pull it back off, but equally I want the folds to be there. So now you'll see that I put a little bit of an overlap on and I just cut those corners out and now what I'm going to do is to glue those edges down. And again I'm putting on a decent amount of the matte medium because the back of the food package is that kind of cardboard. I hadn't sealed it. It's likely that some of the, the glue will actually be absorbed into it. So it needs a decent amount. And then I'm just going round the edges and folding them in. And that will just give me a nice outer edge, a nice secure edge. And it just makes the, the box just that little bit more solid around the edges. Again, I dry it, I cut off any little bits and at this point I'm 
happy with the way that's looking and definitely want to add this bit on. Now at this point I'm looking and deciding which piece I want as the front and which as the back. I left the cover to dry overnight and then I sewed round each individual piece of paper that was on the, the cover just to give some added interest and what I'm doing now is trying to decide which piece I want on the inside. I didn't sew around the outer edge because I'll do that when I've actually got this inside piece glued down. So I looked at a couple of pieces of paper there and I've decided that I want this kind of, I don't know, lilac mauve. It's quite a textured piece of paper. Again, it's from Peter's Handmade Paper. And again, I've added this one because it's quite a thick piece and I felt that this would give stability to the cover and that it would also hold up well with all the glue that I was going to put on it. So you'll see I've made it just sh slightly shorter uh, on all sides so that I can just see a little bit of the papers that were turned over and in. And this time I'm just using a PVA glue I've put on a lot for the reasons that I said earlier. The cardboard will start to absorb some of it so I want to make sure that there's a a decent amount and I could have done it on two steps I could have just put the glue down let it dry and then put another layer down but I just decided to put extra on and the excess that's on the card there I'm just now using to put onto the paper often it's better to put glue on both surfaces because they adhere better to each other spreading that out making sure it's going to the edges Although I know anyway that when I come to stitch around it, that will actually hold that in place as well. So I am going to show when it comes to the papers another way of just painting papers to do a cover kind of similar to this. But uh, the next one in the series will in fact be the fabric journal cover and I hope to get that to you within a few days, a week at the most, but hopefully within a few days. So again, I let that dry overnight and then what I do is to stitch around it. I haven't yet put the fabric onto it. There it is. I did notice there was one bit on the outside that I hadn't stitched, so I decided to do it. Stitching's wonky in places. I don't mind that. This is boho. It's a bit shabby chic in a sense. You see there I did the corners slightly differently and a running stitch elsewhere. That was partly because I was starting to run out of thread and uh, that was a bit that you see but that will be covered up by a pocket so I'm not concerned about that. So hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, fabric journal cover coming next. So in the meantime thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.